The Contact Us page is probably one of the most important pages on your website. So this is where your clients or potential clients can get in touch with you. And if you have a complicated Contact Us page, you will probably lose leads and potential customers. So we're creating this beautiful Contact Us page with a minimalistic contact form that we'll create with the DV form module. We will add a checkbox where you have to agree with the privacy policy in order to send it. And we will also link to the privacy policy in this form. We will protect this form from spam by using Google reCAPTCHA version 3. So I will guide you step by step how to do that as well. We will add our contact information with some nice blurbs with phone, email, street address and a link to map and also our social media channels. We have an FAQ for the frequently asked questions where you can expand or collapse these boxes. And last but not least, we have a map embedded from Google Maps. And uh, Google made it a little bit complicated to use this feature. So I will guide you how to actually embed a map like this from Google Maps without even having a Google account or a Google API or adding your credit card and stuff like that. So this is a super easy and convenient way to add a map to your website. Okay, so let's start by jumping into our development site. And uh, I will actually recycle some stuff from the news page that we did in the chapter before. I will keep this hero area and I will keep this little box to the right for the sidebar and we'll change the rest of the content. So I'll click the contact us page in the menu. And now it's empty. So I will enable the visual builder to start creating some content. So I click clone existing page. And this is a big time saver. I use this all the time in Divi and I will use the news page. So let's start by deleting the stuff that we don't need. And in this case, it's the blog feed and we'll keep the rest. So let's start by changing the background image in the hero area by clicking the cogwheel in the section settings and click background tab and the image. And let's use the lonely guy in the office. There we have him. Poor guy. Okay. And then let's change the copy in the hero. Keep in touch. That's our heading four. And contact us. That's our heading two. Okay. So let's start by filling this box with contact information. And here we are using the blurb module to use these nice predefined icons. So let's start by deleting the stuff that we're not using. But we can actually keep the line and the social media icons. So let's just delete this text. There we go. Okay. So now I will add a blurb module. So I will transform this to this. I can actually copy the phone number there. Uh, the title. Okay. And I can delete the body copy because we'll just work with the title. And now let's go to image and icon. And I want to use an icon, not a custom image. So I click yes. And uh, let's find the phone icon in here. Unfortunately, there are no search feature in this one. So you have to browse to find it. There we have the phone. Let's also link this blurb. So if you tap it in phone or if you click it on the computer, you will call this number. Tell colon and then the number. like that. And we have created a click to call link. So let's design it because it doesn't look good at all. So image icon, I want to change the icon color to our gold brand color. And I don't want to place it on top, I want to place it to the left. So already we have a big difference in there. 
Okay, this is the look that we are going for. So I think the title text should be changed to Carla. There we go. And I would also like to decrease the sizing of this icon a little bit. So we can use icon font size by clicking this one, switching it to yes. And now I can drag it. Maybe we can use this size. Looks okay, I think. Good. So we save this one. And now I can just, I can actually drag it to the top because that's where the contact information should be. If we look at this. And now I can just duplicate this one, two, three times. So we have four. So I click this one. And there we will add our email address with this nice envelope. So info oops at dbcrib.com and the link instead of tell colon will add mail to info at dbcrib.com. Uh, let's change the icon by going down to or up to image and icon. And now we're looking for the envelope. There we go. Nice. Okay, and the next one, that's the street address and we have this pin. So let's find that one. So my street 80 Stockholm. Uh, whoops, street is spelled like that. Emission icon and uh, the pin icon. There we go. And we could link that to maybe Google Maps or so, but I'll just put the bracket in there for now. And uh, yeah, then we have the map or the find your way. And we're going to use an anchor link here, a local link that will send the visitor down to the page where the map will be. So find your way and we'll change the icon to a map. So let's see if we can find that one. Should be somewhere around where this is, I think. Yeah, there we go. And uh, now we will link it. We'll put a hashtag and I will simply call it map for now. So we will add this as a CSS ID to our um, map later. So it will send the visitor down to the map if they click this link. So I'll just have to remember that for now. So let's build a contact form with the Divi Builder using the contact form module. This is what we are going for. It's a minimalistic, really nice looking form where we have the name, email, we have a drop down for category and we have a message field. And then we'll add this mandatory uh, checkbox for the privacy policy. And here we are also linking to our privacy policy. So if you click it, it will open in a new tab. And uh, we'll also add this Google reCAPTCHA. So we will protect it from spam using this service. It's reCAPTCHA version 3 from Google, which is completely free, by the way. Let's head back to our development site and we'll start by clicking the plus sign to insert a contact form module. So here it is. And by default, this is the look of the Divi form. So we can start by adding a new field by clicking here. And we can call it category because we want to add this drop down category. From start, we have the name, the email, and the message, the open text field. So we'll have the title category so the first one is the id that's not visible for the user but that's something we can use to to design the email later and in the field options we can change this from being just an input field for text to being a drop down like that and now we will add our options in the drop down so that could be like support it could be pre-sale, 
and maybe we can be lazy and just add other and I can change this from being a mandatory field or a required field to be just a field that you can fill in, fill out if you want to or not. Okay, so we'll get back here again to uh, add the um, privacy policy checkbox just in a while, but we'll just explore the other options first. So the success message, that's what's displayed on screen when the form is successfully sent. So that could be, thank you. And we can also change the text on the submit bot button, maybe to send, if you like that better. We have the email uh, settings and we'll actually dive into that a little bit later in this video. Uh, in the right redirect field, you can use a custom page like slash thank you. Instead of just displaying a thank you message on the screen, you can send the user to this URL when the form is successfully sent. But I'm happy with the message on the screen for now. And then we have the spam protection that we will explore in a little while. So let's design this first before we add the extra options here. In the design tab, we can design the fields. So the fields background color, I will actually use white for now. And the field text color, I will use this gray color. And the focus background, that's the color when you um, when the user clicks the field to enter information. So we can keep that as is. And the field focus text color, it could be a little bit, dar little bit darker when the user actually is typing the text. Okay, and the font should be Carla, as on the rest of our website, like that. And let's have a look here. We can actually increase the font size a little bit. Shouldn't be hard to read. So we can drag that one up to maybe... Something like that. Uh, maybe 17 is good. Okay. We can actually go down to text alignment and that should be the way it is. We don't use a title for this one. And uh, the captcha text we can skip because we are adding the Google recaptcha in a little while. Then we have the button settings and we want this button to look like the other buttons on our page, like this one in the top. So let's style this one really quickly. So we're using the text size 15. The button text color should be white. And the button background should be gold. The border radius should be zero, zero. That's what's making it square like that. Okay, and the button border color should be gold like that. The button font, we'll use Carla here as well. There we go. And we will have all caps. We will also have some letter spacing, I think, maybe one pixel or so there we go maybe actually we'll have the font weight to bold i think that will look good yes there we go i want to show the button icon this one we can see it there but this one the little arrow there so we'll use that one and it should be white as is placed to the right and only displayed on hover Okay, so now we want to add some margin to this bottom. So we'll add 12 pixels to the top and the same to the bottom. And we have 28 pixels to the left and 28 pixels to the right. So now it will look really nice. And then we can do one thing. Uh, if I browse down here, we can change this icon since it, it is a contact form and we can use the envelope instead as an icon there. Now it's really hard to see where the different fields are and we want to fix that. And we should have these nice lines. So to achieve that, we go to design, we go to border, and we want to add a bottom border, so we click this box. And it should be one pixel, like that. And we can use this color, maybe. 